Okay, we are going to start, <clears throat> uh, we're going to go into uh, section 3.5, probably one of the most important math sections you will ever need uh, in your life because this is so foundational, okay? Um, the title of this section is Write Graph Equations of Lines, Lines. And, um, you know, we've, we've learned plenty about lines up to this point, but just by way of review, a line is a... Uh, a line goes on in two directions uh, forever, right? Um, and a line also has a constant slope. So last section, we talked a little bit about finding slope as um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you know, given that we have an x1, y1, and an x2, y2. Right, and we talked about how slope can be positive, negative, zero, or even undefined. So now uh, we're going to take that a step further, and we want to figure out um, uh, what a linear equation is and how we can write it. So um, to define, first of all, an, a linear equation, this is, um, and it might seem redundant, but this is an equation of a line. Okay, so no matter... Um, no matter what, every time I graph this equation, it's going to give me a line every single time. It's not going to give me a circle. It's not going to give me a parabola. It's not going to give me um, all these different shapes, but it will always give me a line under every single circumstance. Now, the equation of a line, a linear equation, there's three ways to write um, to write this. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give us the, what, what we call each one. So the first one is called uh, slope-intercept form. Okay. The second type is called point-slope form. And then the third type, the third type is called standard form. Now, just like water, for example, and, uh, you know, uh, water can be either, uh, it can be ice, it can be um, like cold water. It can be it can be steam. Um, regardless of uh, what form it's in, it's still the same thing, right? So that's what it's like here. Uh, one thing you're gonna have to be able to do is to look at an equation to go, oh, that's slope intercept form. Oh, that's point slope form. That's standard form. And then also to know, oh, that's the equation of a line, right? Um, so let me go ahead and give these to us. Um, so the slope intercept form would be y equals mx plus b. And um, I know I've said it over and over again, but it's your mama's um, excellent um, burrito is how I used to teach it in my old, old uh, school setting, right? Um, now, the reason why it's called slope-intercept form is because, first of all, there's a, there's a slope, right? And then there's an intercept. And to be more specific, um, this is actually the uh, y-intercept, the y-intercept. Or on a graph, if there's an x and a y, if you have a y-intercept, let's say, of 3, what we're saying is on the y-axis, the graph would hit the y-axis at 3. That's what it means to be a y-intercept, okay? So there's a first form. And just to give a quick example, um, y equals negative 2x plus 4. All right, there's an example of slope-intercept form, okay? With an m of negative 2 with a b of 4. All right, so the second type is called point-slope form. Now, point slope form looks a little bit more complicated. It's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and the reason why this is called point slope form is because first we have a point x1, y1. So there it is, x1 and y1. And then we have a slope 
which is given by the letter M. And there it is. Okay. And then the last form is called the standard form. And um, I don't know exactly why it's called the standard form, but I would venture that it looks, uh, I guess that, it, I would venture guess that standard form is, you know, it just looks kind of standard, you know, x plus y equals a number. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to backtrack here and give an example. So an example here. So y plus 2 equals negative 2, oops, negative 3 times x minus 4, something like that. Okay, so what this tells us is that the point would be uh, 4 comma negative 2. So notice that here it's a minus sign, but here it's a plus sign, right? So I have to think about it in terms of opposites. So 4 comma negative 2, and then the slope would be negative 3. So, right, so it's, it's clear to me that it has to first go through this point. And then it has to have a certain slope, right? One, two, uh, down three, uh, down three over one. So one, two, three over one. Oops. And so that would be something like our, our line. Uh, standard form is, is AX plus BY equals C. Now here's the thing. Here's the one condition. Uh, A, B, and C have to be uh, integers, which is just a fancy way of saying no decimals or fractions. Okay, so for example, negative uh, 4x plus 3y equals 5. There's an example of standard form. All right, so just some observations that I want to make. Um, one observation is this. Notice that x and y are left as variables. Right, all the other letters, M, B, X1, Y1, A, B, C, right, these are all replaced. So M, B, X1, Y1, and then even A, B, and C are all replaced with, and then I'm going to use this word constants. Constants. So a constant is a number that never. Uh, ever changes. It's a number that always stays the same. Secondly, notice that x and y are both to the first power. Okay, meaning it's not, so we don't see any x squared, so we don't see any y squared, so we don't see any square root of x, we don't see any of that stuff. x cubed, and so that is one way to recognize that it's linear, right? To look at the x and the y and to say, okay, they are, the, they are both to the first power, right? So before I actually go, go and answer this question, so let me just give you guys a couple of examples here. So if I say y equals square root of x, or if I say y equals x to the third plus 2x squared plus x minus 5, or if I say, um, you know, 3x minus 4y equals 10. Uh, and then even if I say, let's say, uh, 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 you know, x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 9. Right? Out of these, which one would we say is linear? Right? And the, the answer to this, and hopefully it's fairly evident to you is that this one is a linear equation, right? Because it's in standard form. Ax plus by equals c. And also, once again, when we look at the x, when we look at the y, notice they're not raised to a certain power. So this one might kind of look, it kind of looks like it too, because there's, there's a y and an x, but actually this x can be rewritten as x to the one half power, right? So we do have x raised to a power. So this is what we would call nonlinear. And then this one is, is pretty obvious that it's nonlinear because even though we have an x here and a y here, notice there's an x cubed and an x squared. And so, you know, we're not, uh, we're not excited about that. 
or maybe I am. <laughs> and then the last one here, this one, would also be nonlinear. This is actually the equation of a circle. But this is a nonlinear equation because of the squared here and the squared here. So when you do like, you know, x minus 2, x minus 2, that becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4, right? So because of that, we would say that it's nonlinear. I hope that makes sense, right? Um, so what you have now is a tool, the ability to look at any equation and go, okay, that's linear, that's nonlinear, that's linear, that's nonlinear. Okay? All right, so the third part of this uh, lesson is to answer the question, what is slope-intercept form? So let's, let's approach it uh, in two ways. So first, let's start with y equals, uh, uh, well, so y equals mx plus b. And then let's define all our terms. So m is a slope, which is the rise over the run, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then secondly, um, the b would be the y-intercept, which is where the line intercepts the y-axis. That's why it's called the y-intercept, right? So an x-intercept would be where the line intercepts the x-axis, right? Um, so if I were to just give an example here, let's say y equals negative 2x plus 4. Well, from this equation, I can tell, okay, well, m is negative 2, and then b is equal to 4. Um, so if I draw a graph, I can count up four, one, two, three, four, on my y-axis, right? And right there, I can put a y-intercept. And then this slope can be rewritten as negative two over one, which is rise over run. So this means we rise negative two, or we go down two. And then we run positive one, or we go to the right one. So I go down two, I go over one, down two, over one, down two, over one. And there is the, is, is the graph of my line. Okay, so I use the y-intercept as my starting point. I use my slope as to know where to plot the next point. Now, uh, just a, a quick thought here. Um, there are many ways to graph, but let me just give you another example. Let's say we were to make an xy chart. And let's say I was to put an x equals 0 here, then this would become negative 2 times 0 plus 4, which is equal to 4. And let's say I was to put in 2, I, I just chose 2, this would be negative 2 times 2 plus 4, which is equal to 0. So what this tells me is that 0 comma 4 and 2 comma 0 are two points on my graph. There's 0, 4, there's 2, 0. Notice even if I connect those, it's the same shape, this line that we're looking at, okay? Um, so, I mean, that's only one example, but I would encourage you to, uh, to try a few of them on the homeworks um, and, and see if you understand how the slope-intercept form works. Um, and then just one thing that I would follow up with now is an example of um, what they might ask you. So um, let me go ahead and pull up a problem here. So if, if they say write an equation of a line passing through 2 comma 3 with a slope that is perpendicular to a line with an equation of y equals negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so here's a classic problem that you'll see. Now, um, I want you to notice here a couple things. So write an equation of a line, right? So line, we're already thinking, okay, y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form, or even point-slope form or standard form. Passing through this point, 2 comma 3. So here's my x and y with a slope that is perpendicular 
to align with an equation of, of, of this, y equals negative 2x plus 2. So there's all my hints there. Now, notice that the line that I'm trying to figure out the answer for uh, has a relationship to this line, and the relationship is that it's perpendicular. Now, if we go back a unit, we remember parallel was same slope, and then perpendicular was opposite reciprocal. Does that, does that ring a bell, right? Um, so in this case, we look at this equation, we see the negative 2, which is our m. We see the b, which is our 2. But this is not really helpful for us. This guy is. Because if the slope is 2, I know that the slope perpendicular has to be the opposite. So the opposite of negative is positive, And the reciprocal of negative 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. Right? So, so already here, I have a point. I have a slope. And so at this point, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. Uh, first, you know, if you want to be super technical, you can use point slow form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so there's my x1, there's my y1, there's my m, right? So y minus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 2. And technically, you are finished. <laughs> so it, it's, it's helpful to know these forms, right? Um, if you decide to just stick with one form, slope intercept, then there's an extra step that you have to take to simplify your equation. But it's not too complicated. Uh, we know that y equals 1 half x plus b. And so notice we're not fully satisfied with this answer, okay, because we still want to figure out what b is equal to, right? Notice, right, uh, in the problem itself, y equals negative 2x plus 2. They don't leave that as a b. Uh, notice that in previous pages, right, negative 2x plus 4, right, they don't leave it as a b. So we need to figure out, okay, what's going to replace this b right here? Well, to find that b, we need to replace x and y with a number, and that number that we're going to replace it with is 2 comma 3. So 3 equals 1 half times 2 plus b. 3 equals 1 plus b. b equals 2. It's minus 1 minus 1. And so then if I put it back in, y equals 1 half x plus 2 would be my answer. So now when we look at this answer, when we look, when we look at these two guys, uh, notice they don't look the same. But in essence, they are supposed to be the same, like water, right? So let's take this guy, and let me just show you what happens when we factor, when we simplify it out. So we can do this. So 1 half x minus 1 we can add 3, add 3, and notice what this becomes. y equals 1 half x plus 2. And so what do you notice between the red and the blue? They're exactly the same thing. All right, I hope that is helpful. Uh, it's, this is just a, a, a brief introduction, um, and through